God is the answer. And yet people quench the Spirit of God day by day. By human logic. But we know, we know that the judge shall live by logic. Oh no, that's not what it says. The judge shall live by faith. Let me say this, faith is not logic. Somebody said there's a fine line between faith and foolishness. I said no, there's a great gulf between faith and foolishness. One's obedience, the other's your own imagination. If God says it, the just shall live by faith. Right. It's not a fine line to disobedience. It's a willful choice to disobedience. Mm -hmm. Either you'll live by faith or you'll live by foolishness. And foolishness is what the wisdom of man is come on, come on. in comparison to God. At least that's what I read in Corinthians. That's right. The just live by faith. The just say, Lord, what will I have me today? And when the Lord says, walk out of your job that's making $35,000 a year in 19 plus, plus bonuses in 1996 or 97, and he says, walk away from your job and move into a 23-foot Winnebago and go on the road and preach the gospel, and you say, okie dokie. Now you say there was a lot more than just thinking he said that and doing that. There was a lot of uh, fasting and praying and saying, please God, I do not want to make a fool of myself by moving on in motion. Yep. But as you start pressing forward and you do so, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, you got a hundred dollars a month promise support, and you're saying, God, how am I going to pay the bills? And then God sends a, a paycheck in that you weren't expecting. And you call your former boss saying, Listen, I already took off my vacation. I don't need that. I don't need it. He said, Cheap it. He said, Mr. Schneider's got enough money. Don't worry about it. <laughs> now I know, hey. They're, they're, they're incorporated now, so the company's not a family-owned business, so it really doesn't matter. They can't come after me. It's 30-something years or, 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 or Yeah, 30 years later, they're not coming after me for the money. So, but I'm just trying to tell you, this, this whole idea of faith, that's how we live. But how do we quench the spirit? By saying, it doesn't make sense. You can't do that. Hey, if you, if you leave and it doesn't work out, just let I let you know. I'll hold your job for the next six months. You can come back to work the training center. I'll make sure that you got a place. And then somebody else says, now listen, you know you're always welcome back to the company to keep to, to, to drive trucks and you can become a trick trainer again pretty quick like.
of Israel. They turned back. This quenching has to do with limiting the working of God by resisting as he fans the fire. Does he not tell him, you stiff necked and uncircumcised and hard ears? You do always resist the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do you. The Holy Spirit can be stifled, can be suppressed. But I say this, the Holy Spirit can not be stopped. Mm -hmm. For he tells us being confident in this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He can be stifled, he can be suppressed, but he can not be stopped. So there was church folks in Philippians, he wrote. And in the other church folks, he wrote. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God had, from the beginning, this is what he tells them over in the book. Uh, he said, from the beginning, he says that God was going to do something. He says in 2 Thessalonians, what is he going to do from the beginning? He has chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief in the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now this is not a Calvinistic statement. For the question I asked myself when I said from the beginning to the beginning of what? From the beginning of salvation... For he which has begun a good work in you, God has called you under the fullness of salvation. For whom he did for know, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, and he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And whom he did predestinate, and he also called him, he called him, he also justified him, he justified him, he also glorified. When God starts something, God finishes what he starts. And so from the beginning of salvation, God called you unto the fullness of salvation. You said, I think it's all one thing. Well, God tells them that the angels are ministering spirits. Are they not all ministering spirits set forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation? There's a promised tense, a future tense. God says we have an inheritance, incorruptible, and undefiled, faith not away, reserved in heaven for us. And God has given us His Holy Spirit to sanctify us and set us apart unto Himself and work in us that we might be conformed to the image of Christ. Made me to be partaker of the inheritance of the saints in life. The Holy Spirit can be suppressed. The Holy Spirit can be stifled. But the Holy Spirit can not be stopped. Mm. That is why I have such an issue with people saying you can lose salvation that you have. Because then he which has begun a good work in you will not perform until the day of Jesus Christ. Then God, you're, you're saying God can't finish what God do. Not are they saying you can mess this thing up. I would say on a practical sense, Every day, all day, most days, Amen. I mess something up. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. But on an eternal sin, as we've said before, I'm already in Christ. Amen. I'm already over on the other side. All I'm waiting is to be there. Yes, sir. But now he's inside of me. The Holy Spirit. Doing a work in me to make me ready to be where I already am. And that doesn't make sense. I know that, but it's reality. Mm -hmm. He's working in me to make me ready to be where I already am. 
in Christ Jesus. We are going to look at the Holy Spirit. We're going to look at the attributes of the Holy Spirit. We're going to look at actions of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I love the Holy Spirit. He doesn't talk about himself, but he didn't say I can't talk about it. Oh, no. He brought God through him had the apostles write about him. And if we're going to be Bible students, we need to know not just that there is a Holy Spirit, but that this Holy Spirit is a person. Amen. And this Holy Spirit has all power. Are there any questions about the Holy Spirit that we need to answer immediately? If not, if you ponder the Holy Spirit, you have a question. Write it down. Get them to you. I will answer every question there is about the Holy Spirit. If the Scripture answers. If the scripture doesn't answer, you don't need to know. Let me say, the Holy Spirit speaks in languages that are understood. Don't think he doesn't. He's pretty smart. He doesn't have to find something that's confusing to sit there when God comes to offer a confusion. He doesn't have to speak something that's confusing he can speak to you. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's just let's go. I can see that little kid get out here. Mm -hmm. We're done with Sunday school, Brother Paul Frank.